Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending upon where you are in the world today. Welcome to how to build a SaaS service on Azure here at the Microsoft SaaS Academy technical track, the opening session uh, for this track. Let's start off with the introduction of myself. My name is Nick Pinheiro. I am a senior AI cloud and software architect here in the Azure cloud and AI domain. Uh, basically what we do within our domain is develop custom solutions for the world's largest organizations, essentially the Fortune 500, and specifically uh, web, mobile, and intelligent edge solutions all built on Microsoft Azure. My focus areas are platform as a service, software as a service, and the Microsoft Identity Platform. I'm based out of Boston, Massachusetts, on the east coast of the United States. Uh, for my contact information, if there are any questions whatsoever that you have uh, from this webinar, feel free to uh, reach out to me via email. Uh, you can reach me at nick.pinero at microsoft.com. You can reach out to me via the contact form on my website at iamnickpinero.com. Uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn uh, or feel free to subscribe to my mailing list for various resources, including blog posts, ebooks, uh, among other uh, resources that uh, I do make available on an ongoing basis at onsubscriber.com slash I am Nick Pinero. Okay, so let's take a look at the agenda for this session. This session will be broken into five parts. Um, and individual videos where you can go back and rewatch each video independently. So in part one, uh, we'll review what the objectives are for the overall session. We'll take a look at a high level overview of software as a service, and we'll dive into the many SaaS scenarios that currently exist. In part two, we will dive into SaaS architectures and the various ways in which you can construct a SaaS solution. In part three, we'll take a look at a sample solution that currently exists from our Azure SQL team, which is called the Wingtip Ticket SaaS solution. And then I'll also be introducing a new open source project today called the Azure SaaS Development Kit. In part four, we're gonna take a look at how can you take your existing apps and migrate, migrate those into the Azure SaaS Development Kit, okay? We will refer to our cloud adoption framework in our Azure Architecture Center and the recommendations and patterns and practices revolving around your environments, right? Your dev, test, production environments and the naming conventions that you'll wanna use as you begin to roll out your SaaS solution. At that point, we'll start taking a look at uh, the actual different components of the Azure SaaS Development Kit and focus specifically on onboarding. How do you onboard new customers and create new tenants within your SaaS service? In part five, we'll talk about tenant resolution. Tenant resolution is a very, very important um, element of SaaS and we'll look at the different options that are available to you. And then finally, we'll open up a live application that's currently in production built off of the Azure SaaS Development Kit and run a demo of it. And lastly, uh, we'll look at all the references and resources that we have available um, that relate to SaaS across our many uh, architecture centers, our product groups, and of course, the Azure SaaS Development Kit. So let's start off with just talking about three key objectives that we want to make sure our takeaways for you at the end of this session. First and foremost is to provide an overview of the various SaaS architectures uh, that are available to support startups, ISVs, or enterprises. We'll dive down into what those are. One of the key objectives that we wanted to um, produce with this session is to consolidate the many Microsoft Azure SaaS resources that we have, again, from our many repositories of information from the Azure Architecture Center, from docs.microsoft.com, from the various product groups, and then merge those all into a reference open source solution, which you can then clone 
and begin building immediately and deploy out into Microsoft Azure. And finally, demonstrate a production SaaS solution, uh, as I mentioned, built using the Azure SaaS Development Kit so you can see uh, where it started and where it is today. Okay. So let's start off with an overview of software as a service. Uh, so as you may know, there are essentially five or six key pillars of the cloud that I like to begin uh, each one of my talks touching upon. And those are compute, network, storage, security, and identity. Okay, And it's essentially those core computing pillars that the cloud in and of itself is built upon. And that powers additional layers of the cloud, such as infrastructure as a service, where you're able to spin up virtual machines, which then powers platform as a service, which is a managed layer of the cloud, where you can provision new resources, such as an app service, which underneath the covers is an actual virtual machine. However, you are not responsible for managing that virtual machine in any which way, shape, or form. And then on top of that is software as a service. That is, how do you leverage the various resources that are available in platform as a service combined with frameworks such as .NET utilizing C Sharp to create a SaaS solution that's a pay-as-you-go platform that you can then run as a revenue generating solution on Azure. Okay. So again, as we touched upon, for SaaS scenarios, you essentially want to allow users to connect to and use cloud-based applications that you provide over the internet. Okay, you want them to be able to come in, get onboarded, and when we refer to onboarding, we mean enter there in the information that you need to be able to create them, not just an account, but a tenant, okay? And we'll discuss that more um, shortly. It's a complete software solution that you purchase or subscribe to on a pay-as-you-go basis from a cloud service provider. So one thing to note, for example, is if you're using Azure today, you're using one of the largest SaaS solutions that currently exist, right? Because more than likely, your SaaS subscription, I'm sorry, your, your Azure subscription type is that of pay as you go, which essentially means that you can create new resources and based off of the tiers in which you create those resources, some may be on the free tier, which are free up until a certain limit. Same, some may have a base uh, fee per month and then essentially as you go and leverage more of that particular service, the, the, the fee may increase, okay? And then, for, for reference, you know, common SaaS solutions that currently exist that you probably use every day are, you know, things such as social networks, things such as your email, right? If you're using uh, Outlook.com, Gmail.com, collaboration, SharePoint, for example, which uh, lies within the umbrella of Office 365, is in and of itself a SaaS solution, okay? Any CRM customer relationship management and ERP, enterprise resource planning platform, uh, are SaaS solutions as well. So the advantages of a SaaS solution is essentially that you gain access to sophisticated applications online. You only pay for what you use. There's typically a freemium option that's available, which is excellent, which gets you started and gets you going. You're able to mobilize your workforce directly by leveraging a SaaS solution almost immediately. And you can access uh, your application's data from anywhere, right? Whether it be from a mobile-friendly web application or it be from a mobile device using a mobile uh, app, okay? So in the next session, in part two, we're gonna be t begin taking a look at the various SaaS architectures that are available to you today.